एडवेंट ऑफ द मुगल्स बाबर द मुगल इन्वेडेड इंडिया इन 1526 एंड डिफीटेड इब्राहिम लोदी द डेली सुल्तान इन द फर्स्ट बैटल ऑफ पानीपत द मुगल रूल इन इंडिया स्टार्टेड विथ बाबर आफ्टर ऑक्यूपाइंग डेली ही रिटर्न हिज अटेंशन टूवर्ड्स राजपूट्स Rana Sangram Singh was defeated in the battle of Kanwa in 1527 later he defeated the afghans in the battle at gogra he died in 1530 humayun humayun babur's son came to the throne in 1530 but he lost his empire in 1540 as his brother could not help him on time and also as Sher Shah an Afghan leader who came to power in Bengal and Bihar fought with him successfully in the battle of Kanauz Sat dynasty Sher Shah The Sat dynasty at Delhi was thus established by Sher Shah who belonged to it His father was a jagidar Sher Shah conquered a number of places in India Malwa Rissin Rajasthan Bundelkhand etc were among them the afghans who succeeded him could not retain the empire they lost it to humayun once again in 1555 humayun could occupy delhi with the help of shah of persia akbar since akbar was very young at the time bairam khan was looking after the empire before they reached delhi from punjab Hemu occupied the throne. Akbar defeated him at Panipat in 1556 with the help of Bairam Khan. A number of Rajputs submitted to him and gave their daughters in marriage to him. Akbar could conquer Khandesh, Asirgarh and a few fortresses in Ahmadnagar since his son Jahangir revolted against him. He had to go back to Agra. Akbar died in 1605. His son Jahangir came to the throne. Jahangir. Jahangir ruled the Mughal Empire from 1605 to 1627. As soon as he came to throne, a number of ordinances were declared by him which were useful to his subjects. Amar Singh, the Mewar ruler purchased peace with the moguls bijapur and golconda agreed to pay tribute to the moguls prince khurram shah jahan was behind all these victories the moguls lost kandahar to the persians due to the misunderstanding between nur jahan and shah jahan shah jahan khurram with the title shah jahan ascended the throne in 1628 he could retain the empire with he inherited from his forefathers he could retain the empire which he inherited from his forefathers the deccan kingdoms of bijapur and golconda became feudatories the reason of shah jahan was known as the golden age in the mughal period when he fell ill in 1657 all his four sons fought with one another for succession Finally Aurangzeb could win the throne in 1658 Aurangzeb he gained a lot of military and administrative experience as the viceroy of Deccan he was a Sunni Muslim and big tot the Jats Satnamis six etc revolted against him the Rajputs under the leadership of Durga Das revolted against him he executed guru tej bahadur of the six mogal administration the mogal administration was a centralized one the king was the final authority in executive judicial and military matters during the time of babur and humayun there was not much of administration since they ruled for a short period it was during the time of akbar that a number of administrative measures were introduced akbar introduced mansabdari system in the army each military officer was given a rank and assigned 10 to 10000 cavalry 
they were the mansabdars they were rajput and other hindu mansabdars in the field of judicial administration the king was the final authority in the evening court on every friday he used to dispose of the cases akbar appointed pandits to deal with the hindu cases well knit police organization was prevalent during sher shah's time religion the moguls were sunnis bearing aurangzeb the rest were no big thoughts akbar was tolerant and his aim was universal peace akbar gave them permission to celebrate their festivals publicly social conditions hindus were the majority in the society casteism with its subdivisions got deep rooted in the society the people at the lower strata were the untouchables there were hindus muslims buddhists jains sikhs parsis and christians in the society but there was better understanding between the hindus and muslims during this period than under the delhi sultanate economic conditions the country was wealthy in general one of the reasons might be the political stability brought about by akbar it reached the zenith during the time of shah jahan the economic position of nobles industrialists artisans artists etc was sound majority of the people lived in villages agriculture was their main occupation wheat barley sugarcane rice indigo cereals maize jute etc were grown it was during the time of sher shah that commercial activity increased he abolished a number of taxes on the traders grand trunk roads were laid and sarais were constructed on the way they served as post offices also culture there was intermingling of both hindu and muslim cultures during this period this paved the way for the cultural advancement of the country a number of books in persian sanskrit and hindi were written during this period babars tujuk ai babri in turkish was translated into persian the bhakti movement also was responsible to some extent for this development of regional languages art and architecture the moguls patronized fine arts there is none who has not heard the name of thansen the emperor of music he was in the court of akbar a number of hindu architects were employed and hence their influence akbar constructed a new capital fatehpur sikri near agra ibadat khana panchmahal jodabai's palace etc were also constructed in different styles the monuments of shah jahan's time are still intact the world famous taj mahal juma masjid moti masjid red fort etc were built by him taj mahal was one of the wonders of the world the peacock throne was another artifact art a number of color paintings were painted during the times of akbar and jahangir even south india was influenced by mughal paintings the marathas an independent hindu maratha state was established in 17th century amidst two muslim states namely the moguls and the consultans the present bombay khandesh konkan berar and some areas of madhya pradesh and hyderabad were included in the maratha kingdom shivaji was its founder the propagators of the bhakti movement like eknath tukaram vaman pandit namadev and samartha ramdas united the marathi speaking people they received the much needed political and military training in the courts of ahmednagar and bijapur under these circumstances shivaji could successfully establish the maratha shivaji he was born in 1627 in the fort of shivaner to jijabai and shaji bonsle shaji got pune from the sultan of ahmednagar for his services 
Later, he joined the services of Bijapur. Jizabai was responsible to a great extent to mould his character and career. She used to narrate the heroic stories from the epics and prompted him to protect Hinduism and establish the Maratha state. Dadaji Kondadev taught him horse riding and arts of war. From 1647 onwards, he captured a number of forts from the Sultan of Bijapur. The Sultan was ill at the time. Shivaji captured Torna, Purandhar, Raigar, etc. The Bijapur Sultan imprisoned Shaji Bonsle to control the activities of Shivaji. Shivaji continued his activities after five years. Shivaji next turned his attention towards the Mughal fortress. He occupied a number of them. In 1664, he sacked Surat. But in 1665, he submitted to Raja Jai Singh, sent by Aurangzeb, and signed the Treaty of Purandar with him. Aurangzeb imprisoned him, but he managed to escape from the prison. Shivaji celebrated his coronation with the title Chhatrapati in 1674 at Raigarh. He died in 1680. At the time of his death, not only Maharashtra, but some parts of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu were under his possession. Shivaji's Administration Shivaji was not only a conqueror, but also a good administrator. His administration was a centralized one like that of any other medieval ruler. But he ruled as per Dharma Shastras. He was assisted by eight ministers in his administration known as the Astapradhanas. Shivaji maintained standing army. He paid monthly salaries to them and took keen interest in their discipline. Shivaji was a disciple of Tukaram and Samartaram Das. He worshipped goddess Bhavani. Shivaji was tolerant and respected Quran. 